5.30 a.m. It's still dark outside. I got up early this morning to watch the coverage of the inauguration of Barack Obama. I'm a single mom, and I really wanted to be there, mostly for my son, so that he could be a witness to history. But, like most Americans, especially in these tough times, I can't afford the expense of a ticket to Washington. So, like most Americans, we'll witness history on TV. Breakfast is on the table. I'm waking you up a little bit early this morning so you can watch the inauguration before you go to school. Come on, breakfast is on the table, honey. What history teaches us? That at defining moments like this one, the change we need doesn't come from Washington. The change comes to Washington. This is where we live. It's not a fancy neighborhood. A mix of mostly solid middle-class duplexes like ours and modest single-family homes. But today, front lawns displaying Obama signs outnumber McCain's about five. To one. Sure, we have our share of big chain store malls, but mostly it's a pretty harmonious blend of small businesses where the vegetarian East Indian market sits right next to the local machine supply and industrial tool shop. My name is Brian Rao, um, I'm 27. Um, this is my uh, third national election I've voted in. Uh, in 2000, or in 2000, I was 18, is my first vote, and I voted for George Bush. I was a Hillary supporter, but actually, I think in this case, I think we came out ahead. So, this year, I uh, wanted to make a change, and uh, went with Barack Obama, and uh, voted down here, up on the Harvest Church. went right in probably less than 20 minutes oh really? yeah it was moving quick the poll workers were doing a good job keeping it moving quick we woke up this morning at 6 in the morning to get to the poll by 7 because that's the time that it opened and once we got there there were maybe 30 people in line already and then after a while maybe around 7:15. It was a gymnasium, and it was full of like maybe 200 people. I had all my uh, my measures pre-marked, so I didn't have to read anything. I could just see what I said no to before. I just took it in and just checked it off on the official ballot. Right now, I'm in school, and I work part-time at a um, bookstore. Proposition 2 and Proposition 8, that was the most important, because a lot of people, especially in Proposition 8, they feel just because it's in the Bible, but I feel it's really not up to us. Why should it be up to us if gays get married? That's up to whoever the last days of our lives goes to, if it's God or whoever you believe in. So I feel, and in Proposition 2, that's just horrible putting them chickens in all them cages. I'm very pro-Obama for many reasons, but for me, it's so that the 22-year-old that I work with and your son can you know, say that he's really proud to be an American and that he's proud to be part of this election and he's willing to, you know, still see that there's hope and change and we can go further. This is my niece and she actually went with me to vote. She's under age, so she can vote. 2010, I'll be able to vote. You know, they've only known this sort of post 9-11 life without war. And, you know, this is a president that doesn't, he's post Vietnam, he's post Korea. I mean, he cares about it, obviously. He's gonna try to make the world a better place, but it's not about war for him. And, um, it's a, or it's about a different kind of solution, I guess is the right way to say it. Church, 8 and 16th Northwest, just across from Lafayette Square, from the White House. Uh, since James Madison, every president so has worshipped here at some point during his tenure in the uh, office. 
<laughs> and I think it's, you know, it's such a crucial election, you know, after 9-11 and then uh, the Iraq war and the Afghanistan war and, you know, Halliburton and uh, getting all the war contracts. I think it's time for a new direction for America. And I think people are just fed up with the old cliche, you know, of the system, the good old boy network. I'm Laura Thornhill and I'm an artist. I see so many colors and shapes and sizes when I walk down the streets of New York since I was a young girl that uh, I don't think about it. I was not raised to look at color in any particular way. I realized that Obama was the right candidate after the Iowa caucuses. When I saw that that state that was very predominantly white was all of a sudden embracing this young man. And that lifted my spirits. And that made me see that anything is possible. I don't get what they're doing about the White House. The Bidens are arriving. The Vice President is arriving for this. He gets sworn in first. Out of my face. It seems to me that the whole world is ready for him. Even everyone, you know, in England, they're placing bets. Now I know how Princess Diana felt when. <laughs> Jesus Christ! I have him everywhere. <laughs> and I just think that's that's fabulous. It's you know our country's growing up, the world's growing up. I was watching the uh, uh, rally that was, I believe. Mean, Columbus, Ohio. The crowd takes up a chant. It sounds like they're chanting Obama. And after he spoke, I had tears in my eyes. All of these hands were reaching out to him. All colors, all sizes, small, large, black, white, brown. Oh, well, there it is, November 4th, 2008. That's election day. And I knew that this would be a change for them, that this would be a new hope for them, that they would see themselves and their future in a new way. President Obama, do solemnly swear that I will execute the office of President to the United States faithfully. 34 Americans have now taken the presidential oath. The words have been spoken during rising tides of prosperity and the still waters of peace. Yet, every so often, the oath is taken amidst gathering clouds and raging storms. At these moments, America has carried on not simply because of the skill or vision of those in high office, but because we, the people, have remained faithful to the ideals of our forebears and true to our founding documents. Okay. I got this picture. I'm still looking for it. At the first annual director for the LAPD, the LAFD. But, oh, no, not that. Not that. Here we go. Um. Living in the White House as a family unit, and this is going to be particularly interesting with the. Have a great day. Yeah. Happy inauguration. Yeah.